Hi guys and welcome to Nick's Home Renovation. I'm at my 1936 bungalow and I'll be taking you around the kitchen and utility room behind me which cost around £19,000. I'll be taking you through everything I bought, where I bought it from, how much tradesmen cost and what tradesmen were involved uh, to help you guys at home. I'll start by giving you a quick tour. So for those of you that have seen the renovation as a whole, this was part of the four meter by eight meter extension at the back. And this is the kitchen. We went for a dove gray kitchen units at the back with carbon on the island. Went for tongue and groove all on this island to give it a bit more of an effect. And we also have this utility room which used to be the living room that we converted into a lovely space that is pretty much the size of some kitchens. So let's take you through my list to tell you why this kitchen costs £19,000. So the first thing on my list is where I bought the kitchen from. So it's a company I've used many times, I'm sure many of you have seen my videos on here. Um, it's from a company called DIYKitchens.com. It's something that you input yourself um, and it's way cheaper I've found than any other kitchen company out there. So this particular kitchen costs £6,600 for all of these units. So as you can imagine, it's a lot of units, including larder cupboards, integrated appliances, all these huge 800 by 800 pound drawers on the island. And this particular design is called Stanbury Dove Grey in these units here and the utility room. And carbon on the island here. Yeah. So 6,600 pounds for all of those units. The worktop is a 30 mil quartz worktop. And again, we have that going around the entirety of the kitchen, all of the utility room, and then two meters by one, or 2.2 meters by 1.2 meter wide island, which is a lovely size. And we got this from a company called MT Stones, and that was 3,660. It's really worth shopping around for your worktops as the companies vary so much, but empty stones we found to be the best price and they were brilliant and they even did the upstand along here, splash back behind the hob and splash back behind both sinks here and here, going all the way up the wall and even in the windowsill for a window board here and they did offer to put it in for free over this side of the room as well we actually chose not to on this occasion as we thought it looked nicer than just the normal window boards so already we're at just over 10,000 for the units and the worktop but it is a large kitchen with a utility so already not too bad the handles are from a company called handles for you they're called Henrietta Pool Cups, which were £1.75 each. And just they're just called PC Knobs for £1.90 each. So we spent about £80 on those. Lots and lots of handles. But I really feel like they're really good quality, considering I think they're pretty reasonable compared to some things out there. Going through the appliances. I'll do this very quickly as appliances are sort of up to your own choice, but this is a Siemens cooker hood. I, I always get my appliances integrated. So the Siemens cooker hood is behind there, 96 pounds. Open that up and the light comes on and it works. But I just think it looks so much neater integrated like that. You've got the hot point dishwasher, again, integrated into here. Looks much nicer and neater. Fridge freezer, uh, sorry, the hot point dishwasher is 275. 
fridge freezer from Indesit. Again, integrated into this end unit, and that's £324. Going for a 70 30, 70 at the top, and 30 fridge freezer at the bottom. Then, my favourite two things along with the hob in here are these Bosch microwave oven and Bosch single oven. So, the top one is the microwave oven, and that was. £312 and the Bosch single oven £360. I really like the pretty much all black look with a tiny bit of chrome here. But I like the all black look personally and I like that there's not an, a large amount of knobs and handles and things. And that goes together well with the Bosch hob which is also £324 and that's an induction hob. And I think induction hobs are much neater than gas personally. That hob was yeah, 324 pounds, I think I said that. Then two taps, went for consistency. So they're both the same. They're both Reginox taps. Sorry, they're both Reginox sinks for 156. So this is one, and this is called an undermount sink, because as you can see, it's in, built into the cupboard like this. So we went for two undermount sinks, one here. one here and the taps are also the same and they're from Victoria Plumbing and they're Reginox LB dual lever taps and again we got those in chrome and tied everything else in with that. The flooring that I've got throughout the property so there's all of the utility room, all of this open plan kitchen, diner, living room and I took it down all the way down to the front door down there and the rest of the place is carpeted. Um, this is from Wix and it's called Bergen Oak and it was about £700 including really good underlay as well. It's flooring I've used at my own flat in London and on a few properties before and I've never had any issues. I really like the colouring of it and it's really good long lasting, doesn't chip. There's always something I'm, I tend to lean towards because I've just had no issues with it in the future. These lovely pendants here are not cheap, but I really think they finish off the kitchen well. They're from John Lewis and they are called Grey Angle Poise 1227. And they were 216 pounds each, which is a lot, but I think we needed something big over the island there just to finish off the whole kitchen. I think anything small would have, wouldn't have been right. And these were the best I could find and I really like them. On the other side of the kitchen, these lights will be over a dining room table. So they've got to be lowered, but I didn't want them lowered at, during the, when the work was going on. So these were from Dun Elm and they're called Vogue Glass Pendants and they were 99 each. They are really attractive and I was tempted for a while to put them over the island as I think that would really work. Um, but in this instance I kept them over there to go over the, what will be the dining room table. Lastly, I went for the three column radiator here which is from Victorian Plumbing. I don't usually go for these taller wall hung ones but I thought it like because of the kitchen dominating all of that space there wasn't really anywhere for a radiator unless we went for underfloor heating which I'm not the biggest fan of so I thought that fitted really well in there and then went nicely with our feature wall along here too. This radio radiator over here is a bit different it's from a company called Better Bathrooms, who are also owned by a company called Appliances Direct. They have several companies, and these radiators are all called Nambi, N-A-M-B-I. And they range from 90 pounds to about 160, 170 pounds, depending on which size you have. Um, and I think they all work really well in that anthracite color, matching this feature wall, and work in this space really well. So that's the costs of the materials and where I bought everything, but you're probably wanting to know how much carpenters and plumbers and electricians would cost for this space. 
So my carpenter did a sort of a whole deal for me because he had to do so much in this property. He had to fit the kitchen, fit the utility, fit the flooring, skirting, um, doors, architraves. Um, he built the wardrobes upstairs, all the window boards, um, and a few miscellaneous things such as the loft hatch, or lots of miscellaneous things actually. Um, but most kitchen fitters should be around, I would say, two and a half thousand to three and a half thousand. I know companies like Ren charge four thousand, um, which their Ren will obviously make a bit of money on as well. But for me, that's too much. So, as this was a kitchen and a utility, I'd probably put the amount he charged me down to around three and a half thousand for fitting the units here and the flooring. Um, the worktop was fitted by the company who installed it, uh, who I bought from. So I'm not including that. Um, the plumbing, I put about 1,500 pounds into this for the sheer fact that he had to do quite a lot of plumbing. So he had to do two sinks, one, two. All of the boiler works, which the boiler's in here. That doesn't include the cost of actually buying the boiler, obviously. We've got the boiler integrated in here. And then obviously you've got integrated washing machine in here with plumbing work needed for that. Dishwasher in here. So it ended up being quite a lot of work. So again, my plumber gave me a price for the whole bungalow. So three bathrooms worth, the boiler, alterations to everything. We, we ripped out every, every old pipe and renewed all proper pipes. So I have a general price for the whole thing, which I'll do in a separate video. But I'd assign around 1,500 pounds of his cost personally, not, not material costs to a kitchen. And then as most of you know, I'm an electrician. So electrics again is difficult to, to put a number on it because I rewired the whole house. But I think most kitchens, if you're rewiring a kitchen, you're probably looking at around 1,500 pounds to 2,000 pounds as well. Probably nearer 1,500 pounds, um, excluding materials, so labor costs. Um, unless you went for cheaper plastic things. So the total cost of this kitchen utility, I put around 19,000 pounds of which really is about 14,000 pounds of materials and about 5,000 pounds of labor. So hopefully that's some sort of guide for you guys as I know every kitchen is different and this one is particularly big, but hopefully you find it of use. Um, anyone wants to ask me some questions, you can email me. Um, I'd like to help you out. And uh, good luck with anyone trying your own kitchen renovation. Cheers.